Here we go. Hallelujah. We are live. Thank you so much for joining me. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Bryn Champ. I am the co-founder and executive director of Destiny Encounters alongside my husband, Charlie. And today we have such an incredible woman of God. I am so honored to have with me today, Pastor Chanel Burroughs. So welcome to the show. Hi. Thank it's you. so awesome, so awesome to be here with you, my sister in Christ. This it's is so awesome. incredible. Just a brief introduction for those of you that don't know Pastor Chanel. Um, we go back probably almost 20 years. We yeah. attended the same Bible college, Valor Christian, which was formerly World Harvest Bible College. But Chanel is a pastor. She's married to Pastor Eldridge Burrow. She's a mother of three sons. They pastor a church, West Pembroke Pentecostal Assembly in Bermuda. Yes. And you have been pastoring for nine years, right? Nine years, yeah. And just a few years ago, you came out with your, your first album as well as your first book, At His Feet, right? Yes, yeah. I so sure do. Beautiful. And aren't you doing like a weekly show called At His Feet? Yes. 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 Every Friday at uh, 12 p.m. I do it. It's awesome. I've gotten to listen to a few of those um, episodes and you always stir me up and encourage my spirit. And anytime I feel like giving up that week, I'm like, let me listen and see what you know. Okay. And I'll go better. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, let everybody know about, um, what you do, where you came from, you were called into ministry at, it was at 20 years of age and you moved from Alabama to Ohio. Is that yes. how that happened? What happened? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, I'm originally from Huntsville, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I met my husband in Bible college, like you were talking about earlier. And one day, man, we just felt the call of the Lord to come here to Bermuda. And that was in 2006. Wow. And so, yeah, it hasn't been an easy, you know, an easy transition being that, you know, I'm American and all that. But man, when I tell you, we have seen the hand of God over here and so many people we've been able to reach. So God's faithful. God is faithful. But yes, like you said, we've been pastoring for the past nine years at wow. West Pembroke Pentecostal Assembly. And so, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. all that I can think of yeah <laughs> that is that is powerful because I was looking at a little bit because we have a like um similar background in that we went to the same bible college that's yes. where we met and we were both yes. studying um evangelism and then yes. you went on for the advanced pastoral degree and yes. so we were there at the same time and I remember um you know meeting Eldridge for the first time he was one of the first people I met at Bible college and I thought mm -hmm. wow just the joy and the love that overflows from the both of you and then seen it over the, the past 18 to 20 years, really um, staying faithful to the call that God has placed on both of your lives and to the ministering of the gospel is such a beautiful testimony to um, the Lord's work in your life, really. Thank and you. so it's, it's, a, it's such an encouragement, I think. Um, yeah. It's yeah, encouraging. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I wanted to invite you on. I've really been, um, you've been in my spirit, if that sounds right, for like maybe the, the past six months, really since, since January, I've been listening to your um, Facebook lives and, and listening to you preach. And you're always um, like a mighty woman of God with a, a now word. And so I've been doing these interviews with um, various women that I feel have a prophetic voice for this generation and God puts you on my heart. And so I wanted to bring you on and ask you really like during this pandemic and the sort of crisis that our society is in right now, how are you guys pastoring? What, what are some of the obstacles you've come against, against? And then what are some of the positive things you've experienced? Well, I tell you, um, of course, like it was very difficult when we had to shut down the churches here in Bermuda. Um, we were hoping that it wasn't going to go that way, but the cases just started rolling in. Yeah. So um, that was very difficult. So immediately um, we said, okay, let's just shift everything to Facebook. And I'm so thankful because the majority of our people, you know, they're very hip 
you know, when it comes to social media. So they were able to, to, to click right in. And those that might not have a Facebook account, they were, uh, they were familiar with Zoom. So okay. I'm thankful, yeah, that we've been able to keep in contact with the majority of the people from our church. But it's crazy because I want to say the last Sunday before we were told to shut down our church, I was ministering and God had spoke to me while I was preaching. And he said that in the next seven weeks, you're getting ready to, to reach more people than you've ever reached. And in my mind, you know, I'm thinking like, I told the people, I was like, look, start telling people about Jesus, invite them to church. Let's mm -hmm. get it going. Revival is getting ready to break out. I had no clue that God was referring to uh, the Facebook lives that we would be doing, the Zooms that we would be doing. I had no clue that that's what he was referring to when he said that you'll reach more. So um, the positive side of it is we've seen people uh, be ministered to in the UK, um, where else in different parts of America, people are just tuning in and they're talking about how blessed they are. And I'm like, wow, Father, like this is, you know, what seemingly was started off as something bad and, and very sad because we weren't going to be physically with our people. It yeah. really turned into being a major blessing as far as preaching the gospel and reaching way more people than what we would have ever reached had we remained in the building. So yeah. 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 That's incredible when you realize yeah. like how the power of the internet and how social yes. media can really be used to preach the gospel and yes. that there's no distance in the spirit realm. And that's what's yes. incredible is that the anointing that's on your life can be trans furred even through the computer and so yes when someone from australia is watching you or the uk or the middle east there's no limitations and there's no restrictions and so you're able to pour out and pour into them and that's the beautiful side of technology yes. that we as christians can you know we can come into unity and we can really use it um to establish the kingdom so that's incredible yeah i'm telling you your yeah. influence grow and your church grow even on um facebook and zoom and other other platforms that's awesome yeah, yeah. god is faithful god it's, is and the it's thing like, of it is it was one lady um that that went to our church she recently well she moved like about two years ago to start teaching in dubai and recently we've been able to reconnect with her as well through zoom so i mean like god is just bringing this thing together it's, awesome. it's just amazing yeah that's that's so powerful um chanel what is what is um i don't know if you got to read some of the questions but yeah. what, what i like to call this show or what have you is the sacred space because mm -hmm. it's um carving out some time like in our ordinary life where we can experience the Lord or the extraordinary. And so what are some things where maybe you have like a sacred space or where you experience the divine in your everyday moments? You're a mother of three, you're a yeah. pastor, you're a wife. Yes. I mean, you're, you're intense. Like you're yes. incredible. You're busy <laughs> like that. me. So yes. it's like, what, it, what do you, what's helpful for our uh, viewers? So, you know what this is when I read the question I was like man this is so good because I think that this is something that I'm still learning mm -hmm. and it seems like um even with the pandemic and you know with everything being shut down or whatever have you um I've really learned how to take time or I'm learning I should say it like that how to really take time for myself because you know how it is as a mother as a wife as somebody in full-time ministry you're you're all you're so used to always trying to do things for everybody else that you know a lot of times you can you can forget to focus on you and so one of the things i i tell people and it's you know sometimes this comes off kind of weird but this is just how it is um a lot of times uh, when i really want to hear the voice of the lord i will start cleaning i know that that sounds yeah. weird <laughs> No, but I know. Something happens. Okay, so you experience it too. Because normally when I tell you alone, when you start yes. singing, so yes, you're alone. exactly. Yep. Exactly. Um, because, uh, you know, I tell people this and they're like, really? But mm -hmm. something happens when I grab a hold of a broom and like a mini scrubber and like I go to the bathroom or the kitchen and I just start mm -hmm. cleaning, like God always meets me right there. And That's so, true. um, I, 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 uh, you know, here lately, I've been really taking the time to just 
focus on doing that. And it's so refreshing. And like you said, whenever that's happening, my children and my husband, they know, okay, let me give her her space. Right. Because they know that, okay, God's dealing with mommy, you know, and yeah. what I love about it is it teaches them as well um, how to be sensitive to his presence. So mm -hmm. like maybe like about two weeks ago, I was in the kitchen and I was cleaning. And I just started singing this song. And when I tell you that the spirit of the Lord just invaded my kitchen and I, next thing I know I'm on the floor. Right. And when I, when I got back up, my, my husband was in there with me, but when I got back up, he was gone. And so wow. that lets me know, you know, they know like, okay, when God's dealing with her, let me just give her her space. So that's yeah. one thing that, yeah, I've, I have learned to do during this whole pandemic and um, that I'm learning still. Man, yeah. that's awesome. I saw recently, I can't remember who wrote it up in like sort of an article, but they were talking about the men of the Bible and how when they went to visit God, they always met him on the mountain. The men had to go meet God on the mountain. But when yeah. God was meeting women, he, he came to them. Like he Come always on. met them where they were. So yeah. I'm like, yes, like they came and visited you. You know, Jesus came to Mary and Martha and he yes. came to their house. And so it's like, whatever your situation is, you may be a busy working mom. You may be a single mom. You may, you know, have, you have all these responsibilities, yeah. you know, open your spirit up to experience mm -hmm. God in any time of the day and he will come yes. and invade you with his presence. And so that really is, um, a key you now for people to realize that even in the busyness of the day, there can be a stillness in your spirit. And it's a learning process for me to cultivate that habitation where he can dwell in every area of my life. And especially the home going like, this isn't just like a meaningless chore. This isn't cleaning up after the kids. Not yes. that that's the only thing that you do, but yes. in those moments, God can yes. really speak to you, can oh, yes. um, pour out revelation, can give you downloads and creative ideas and insights into the word. And that's really, really powerful. Yes. Incredible um, um, time. So Chanel, what are you feeling is like a right now word that you have for that you really want to take time to dive into maybe and share with people watching today um, that's been on your heart or in your spirit in the last couple months or even days that the Lord wants you to share? Yes. Well, you know, um, for the past year, I want to say he, God began to start dealing with me about the woman in second Kings chapter four. Mm -hmm. And one thing that was very significant about this lady is that she was in a serious situation, facing a very serious situation. The Bible says that she had just lost her husband. And on top of that, her husband had left her deep in debt. And in those days, um, if you're familiar with her customs, in those days, um, anytime that you owed a debt, they had legal right to come and take your children and to basically make them into slaves until that debt was completely uh, paid off. And so this was a woman that was facing a very rough time in her life and she needed a miracle. She needed some mm -hmm. type of answer, some type of way out. And the Bible says what she did, and I, I love her response. She didn't, she didn't curl up into a ball and feel sorry for herself. She didn't get emotional. She went right back to the place where her husband had spent years of being faithful, years of serving. She went to the prophet Elisha and the Bible says that he served the prophet Elisha. He served him faithfully and he feared the Lord. Hmm. And one thing that God said to me, he said, um, you have to understand this man, he, uh, he, he, this was his seed that he had sown, even though it wasn't a financial seed, he sowed a seed of faithfulness and God took note of that and it was so it was so uh potent his seed was so potent to the point where his wife was able to to pull on it and wow. and and yes yeah, she was able to pull on that seed and and bring forth a result for her family and so the bible says that she went to the prophet and she told him her situation and his response was what is it that you want me to do for you because you 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 can get something right here because your husband 
husband, he sown on your behalf. Yeah. He might not have known everything that he was doing, but God looks at it like this. And her response was in that moment, I don't have anything except for a pot of oil. In other mm -hmm. words, I know that this pot of oil is not enough, but it's literally all I have. Um, you know, she really looked at her situation as or, or the, what she had. She looked at that oil as being a bit insignificant. Mm -hmm. But one thing that God told me is that in this season, God is taking the very thing that we deem as insignificant. He's going to take that thing and he's going to build on it. He's going to take that thing and he's going to multiply it. He's going to blow your mind with yes. the thing that you thought would never, would never be able to help. The thing that you mm -hmm. thought would be so insignificant that it would never reach the masses. It would never do anything on your behalf. And so when she said, I only have this pot of oil, he said, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take this small pot of oil and I want you to begin to borrow vessels uh, from your neighbors. Go mm -hmm. to your neighbors, borrow vessels from them, and then take that oil and begin to pour into it. And the Bible says that okay. she was obedient to this command. You know, she didn't question it. She didn't say, but this doesn't make any sense. How is this pot of oil going to fill up a bunch of vessels? This isn't adding up. And so we have to understand that in this season, the instruction that God is going to give you, it's not going to make sense because right. God wants to do something miraculous on your behalf. He wants to do something supernatural for your business, something supernatural for your family, for your church, but it's based upon an instruction. And so the Bible says that this woman of God, she went and she did that and she began to see every vessel fill up but she never saw her oil run out. And yeah. so, uh, Sister Brynn, one of the things that God told me that in yeah. this season, it is imperative, especially now that basically the earth is closed. Everything's kind of come to a standstill. Yeah. God said that in this season, this is the moment for us to locate our oil. For mm -hmm. some of us, it's a business. For some of us, it's an idea that God wants to birth through you in this season. For mm -hmm. some of us, you are going to be the answer uh, that, that someone in your family is going to need. For some of us, you're going to be the answer that your nation needs. Come and on. so, yeah, and so this woman of God, she did that. She followed the instructions. She poured her oil out in the vessels, and the Bible says that she ran out of vessels, but she mm -hmm. did not run out of oil. Come That's on. That's so good. You, yes, you need to know that in this season, when you are obedient to follow the instruction that God has given to you, uh, the very thing that you thought that you did not have enough of, God is going to make it so that it's going to be so much left over. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that she has so much oil left over. The Bible says that she was able to go and sell this oil. In other words, she was able to become the supplier. She Come started on. off being in a in a in a situation where you know she 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 needed she needed some type of loan, some type of lending. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that she ended up becoming the supplier to other people that was in need of oil. So I'm telling you guys that in this season, yeah. the spirit of the Lord is going to anoint your idea. The mm -hmm. spirit of the Lord, he's going to anoint your hands. He's going to anoint your mind. Come on. He's going to anoint your business. He's going yeah. to anoint your, your ministry. Come on. He's going to put his hand on the very thing that you never thought that you, uh, you never thought would never make a difference. God is going to put his hand on that and he's going to cause it to multiply. Oh, God told me earlier, he mm -hmm. even said that he even said that he's going to bless you in such a way that uh, that people are going to be, they're going to be uh, in, in, they're going to be wanting to know about what your product is. People are going to be asking for mm -hmm. what your product is before you can even advertise. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And yeah. the reason why all of this is happening now, this mm -hmm. is the part where, you know, you have to you have to really listen and understand mm -hmm. the reason why all of this is taking place is because I really believe that there is a serious famine that is coming we're not in it yet 
But I do believe that there yeah. is one that is on the way. And we know based upon the scripture that the way that God operates is he never, he never, you know, allows you to get thrown into a situation without giving you some type of, some type of uh, time to prepare for it. Yes. And so I really believe that down through here, God has us in a time where he wants us to start preparing mm -hmm. for what's coming so that it will not affect you. Oh, mm -hmm. your oil, the oil that God is getting ready to reveal to you that you have, you have it. The oil that God is getting ready to reveal to you, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to cause you to miss out on a whole entire famine. It will oh. not touch you. It will not touch touch your children. Mm -hmm. It will not touch your household. It will not touch your ministry. Yeah. And I really feel that in my spirit, I feel that after this, there are going to be so many churches that could potentially, you know, feel the famine. They could potentially feel, you know, the financial, uh, the pain from this pandemic. But mm -hmm. if you find your oil now, if you locate your oil now and you begin to follow the instruction that the spirit of the Lord gives to you, yes. this thing, it will not affect your ministry. You're going to Come continue on. to reach the people that God has anointed you to reach. Come on. Uh, you're not going to lose your building. Oh, that's really, really big. You're not yeah. going to lose your building in spite of what the banks might be saying saying you're going to be able to pay off the mortgage. Oh, you're not just going to make a payment on your mortgage, but you're going to be able to pay off the whole thing. Yeah. We are coming up out of this thing untouched. Yeah. We're coming up out of this thing unharmed. Come on, we're mm -hmm. coming up out of this thing walking in plenty, walking in right. more than enough, walking in overflow. Mm. But it is all based upon, it is all based upon obeying and instruction. The instruction mm -hmm. was, what do you, well, the instruction, well, he asked her a question, what do mm -hmm. you have in your house? And when she identified what she had in her house, the remaining instruction was, well, go and take that and pour it out. Watch this thing. Watch this thing uh, double right before your very eyes. Watch this thing never run out. Oh, we wow. serve a God that is known. We serve a God that is known for causing things that, you know, that you think that you don't have enough of. Mm -hmm. He's known for causing it to never run out. Right. We know about it with the woman in 1 Kings 17. The Bible says that her barrel of meal, it never wasted in her cruise mm -hmm. of oil. It never ran out. This thing that God is getting ready to birth through you, it will never run out. Oh, That's it's going right. to last you, this woman of God in 2 Kings 4, she came up out of this thing with her own oil and company. It never Come on. ran out. My God, she became the supplier. Come yes. on, when other people in her neighborhood ran out of oil, they know who to go. They know who to mm -hmm. who they needed to go to. They didn't go to any other store. Come on, her okay. oil. You know that it was good because it was supernatural oil. Come on. I mean, it don't get no better than that. Right. I love Crisco and I love Wesson oil, but I believe that I'll go for the supernatural oil over yes. there, those type of oils. I mean, God, He wants to give you the best, but mm -hmm. it's all based upon your obedience. It's all based upon your obedience to Come his on. instruction. So I'm telling you, that's what I've been sensing in my spirit for about a year now. Wow. And I really believe that God has positioned us mm -hmm. um, as his people to really get in his face and really ask him, okay, God, what's the purpose of this? Because we know that you don't just have us here so that we can sleep all day. Right. We know that you don't have us here, you know, just so that we can rearrange our house all day. You have you have brought us to this place. You have positioned us for such a time as this, yeah. so that we can hear what our next move is. Mm. And um, you know that's one of the things that's so significant about that story as well. Um, if she would have never gone back to the prophet after she poured the oil in those vessels, if she would have never gone back to him, she would have never found out what her next move was. The mm. oil just would have remained. Mm -hmm. 
in those vessels, but she knew that, okay, now that I've poured the oil in the vessel, uh, now that, uh, you know, I've ran out of vessels, but I didn't run out of oil, there's got to be a part two. God, what's next? Yeah. And for some people out there, you know, you have the business, you have the idea, you, mm -hmm. you've, uh, you found your oil, but you need to know, God, what's my next move? What is it that you want me to do after this? What's going to be the thing that's going to cause this thing to boom? And yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that uh, God wants to reveal to you what your next move is. What's next? He wants to reveal to you what your now what is. And I'm telling you, man, when this thing gets back up and running, when yeah. we all get back up on our feet, mm -hmm. people are going to be looking at you and wondering how in the world... <clears throat> How in the world are you coming up out of this thing at, you know, at an even, at an even higher rate? How are you yeah. coming up out of this thing and your business is doing even better than it was, you know, when we first went into the pandemic, yeah. you know, everybody else is struggling around you, but you're not going to struggle. Mm -hmm. The Bible says a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 upon your right hand, but it shall not come nigh right. unto your dwelling. Oh, this thing is not going to touch you. Yes. It's not going to be able to touch anything that God has given to you for no other reason than because you are going to be obedient. That's and right. One of, yeah. And one of the last things that I'll say that also made this woman's story so significant is that remember her husband sowed. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is so imperative because a lot of times, you know, we want the miracle, we want the right. blessing, but you have to understand that the way God, the way God's kingdom operates is when you give, it will be given. And a lot mm -hmm. of people, especially in our generation, we don't want to hear that part. Right. And, you know, we'll start coming up with all this type of carnal thinking, but that's the way that God operates. When you give, when you release what's in your hand, right. when you release what's in your mouth, then that thing will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, uh -huh. shall men give unto your bosom. She had no clue that all the years of her husband being faithful to serving uh -huh. Elisha, being faithful to the Lord, they had no clue that they were going to come up out of that thing with the harvest of having their own oil and company uh -huh. and being able to be the supplier to their city or to their neighborhood. They had no clue how how it was going to end. Come on. I want to yeah. tell somebody that the, oh God, your seed is going to work for you in such a way that, yes. that when you see your harvest, when you get your harvest back from your seed, oh my God, it's going to be, it's going to be so big. It's going to be so major that mm. it's going to shock you. It's going to oh. shock people around you because you would have never thought that off the back of your being obedient obedient to sow that seed, you would have never thought that that's the kind of harvest that was on the other side of it. Yeah. You would have never thought that your business was going to boom like that, or that your life or that your ministry was mm -hmm. going to boom like that. But I'm telling you that it is, this is the moment to really position yourself and posture yourself to what God is speaking for your life, because mm -hmm. he wants to reveal to you the hidden things. It's not hidden. What Pastor Parsley always says, it's not hidden from you. It's hidden for you. For you. So Come that's on. what I believe. Oh, that's, yeah. That's so powerful. So powerful, wow. Chanel. And the key is, is obedience. Yeah. That's what I hear you saying is that yeah. this, the years of seeds that have been sown, and then there was a choice she had to make. She had to be obedient. And there's a lot of people maybe watching today that are stuck under even prophetic words that they've had over their life for years, things that they're holding on to as promises, but they haven't made the corresponding action because faith without works is dead. So they're sitting with a promise, but they mm -hmm. haven't positioned themselves, you know, to fulfill that purpose. They haven't taken the right action so what I hear you saying in the spirit is that it requires obedience and sometimes that that's a bit of a stretch sometimes the seed is a sacrifice yes but that oh, yeah. harvest that comes back is so worth it. We've seen it time and time again in our personal lives and in our ministry and in our family, seeds of our time, seeds of our finances, seeds of prayers in the heavenlies. And, and they've come back in, in hundreds of thousands of even salvations that we've seen in the harvest field. So 
I am just, wow, what an on-time word, what an encouraging word. Find your oil. Somebody that's watching right now, you need to type that into the broadcast. You need to find your oil. Find what you think is insignificant but it's what you have and God is going to pour out his anointing upon that so that you're no longer in debt, but you're a distributor of that. That's, that's amazing. That's incredible. And that somebody needs to grab a hold of that today and run with that. And even now, Chanel, I really feel we're going to put a link in here, but if you want to sew into Chanel and Eldridge's ministry, to um, what they're doing in their personal lives. We're gonna have your Cash App link so people that are blessed by what you've shared today can even sow into your ministry in Bermuda, into your family and into your life and even testify of the harvest that is gonna come into their life because of the seeds that they sow. This is a powerful word, this is on time. And even if you're watching now, there's an invitation for you for fresh oil. Maybe this quarantine hasn't been so good for you. Maybe you've been struggling um, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, in your soul realm. It's time to get a fresh touch from heaven and God wants to pour out that fresh oil. So right now we just break off every bondage, every hindrance, every mental attack to those that are viewing. We bind it in the name of Jesus and we release a healing wave over you now. We release that freedom in the realm of the spirit that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And you may be struggling. You may be struggling in your finances. You may be struggling in just an emotional area, but God wants you to experience true freedom today. And he's inviting you even now to experience that fresh oil in Jesus name. Jesus name. Man. Hallelujah. That's powerful. Chanel. Wow. Praise God. That's, Praise that is God. so good. That is so, it's, it's yeah. so needed. Um, really the encouragement um, and just, just the encouragement of letting people know that there's an opportunity to come out unscathed. Yes. Because of the God that you serve, because yes. of the kingdom principle, the kingdom principles that you operate yes. under. We don't yes. operate under, you know, the world's system. We operate yes. under the kingdom system. Yes. And so you can go through hard times. You can go through pandemic. You can go through uncertainties that we're all facing and yes. you can come out victorious. Yes. And you've got people on your side that are praying for you in the realm of the spirit. You've got a family in the body of Christ that is, right. is cheering you on for victory and yes. declaring the word of God over you. And it's a season of breakthrough for yes. people. There's a, there's an open heaven. There's a lot of strife and there's a lot of turmoil right now in society, but there's also a divine moment for, yes. for reconciliation and for unity and for just that fresh oil to really bring people together to come out victorious. Yes, yes, spot on, spot yeah. on. Did you want to add on. anything else before we wrap up today? Um, it's so powerful. Girl, wow, wow. Well, you know what? First and foremost, let me just thank you so very much for just giving me this opportunity to get this word out. Like I said, this is something that, you know, I didn't just come up with yesterday. It's I've literally been carrying this word for about a year now. And um, it, to the point where I'm like, God, you know, how many more times do you want me to, to declare it? But I had no clue last year that this was this is what, you know, the, the world was going to look like this year. So yeah. obviously, God, I did. And I just really, really sense that, especially for his people that are willing and obedient, mm -hmm. I really sense that we stand in one of the greatest moments, even though, you know, it all around, it might look completely opposite, look completely right. crazy. But in the realm of the spirit, we stand in one of the greatest moments uh, to really tap into, to really tap into our harvest. This mm -hmm. is the moment, guys, it is harvest time. And when you are willing, and obedient you will see it come to pass come I on. Declare that. oh yes come on well if you guys have um enjoyed this um broadcast thank you so much for tuning in you can find chanel on all of her socials i had them written down somewhere but you're on instagram you're on yes. facebook chanel burrows we'll type chanel. it in the um, comments so they can find you they can find your ministry they can find out more about you and connect 
with you because you are a mighty, powerful woman of God. It's an honor to be your friend um, and to know your beautiful family. So thank you so much for joining me today. God bless. Love you so much.